Hola, mi fantasy familia. It is Scrondog checking in from Monterey, Mexico. The America's RMR is nearly wrapped up, but the European RMRB is about to begin. So coming at you hot with another HLTV fantasy land. Tons of CS in the last week and still a lot to go. Uh, the Paris Major, the last CSGO Major, and we've had upsets galore in Europe. I think this next RMR is going to be a little more stable. However, the Goblins did decently, man. This double mouse pick of mine had me shaking in my boots after day one. I never expected mouse to struggle as badly as they did, but I am at the same time so proud of them for being able to pull back a best of three versus Virtus Pro and a best of three over phase to qualify for the major. Uh, I mean, they had some of the worst starts out of any of the favorites, and then they finished as strong as they did. I think moving forward at the major, it's a really promising result, even if it's one that kind of cost us a little bit in fantasy. I'll let it go. Juan Flotro played excellently. Bad News Eagles busted up phase the same way Maus did. We actually had three players in our draft who just ended up smoking four, in fact, bit. So 80% of our draft ended up, you know, knocking phase down to the point where now they have to play the last chance. Flit was a disappointment. Ultimately, Virtus Pro will not be in Paris. That's a shocker. But uh, he tried to hold on. He tried to do his carry. Didn't end up being enough. Good boosters this week as well. So we finished in the top 22nd of the EU RMR A. I'm going to take that one. North American RMR, the Merfolk. I went heavy on Imperial. Oh, man. I think it's just the new format in Americas where you have one best of one loss and one best of three loss, and then you get eliminated. There was no real second chance for Imperial once they started as slowly as they did. Big Uzera and Alige still going to play today, so maybe I get you know knocked up a couple percentile if they have a really good performance. And then that whole next gamble in order to get money definitely didn't pay off. I, I should have put more stock in Liquid uh, versus Zero Zero Nation at the start of the RMR, making Cold Zera's company have such a difficult run. They got smoked. Next was not the bet, boys. It's a tough one. 73%. Ah, ugh. That's honestly a horrible fantasy for us at NA Showdown and a horrible fantasy at the NA RMR. So not really in tune with my North American brethren at the moment, but is what it is. Current scoreboard for the spring season on the Celebrity HLTV leaderboard, and we are still holding on to our top 10 spot. At the moment, you know, my expectations for the season, I'm still shooting for top three, but with Maniac sitting on 124 points, we will not take back first place unless he also throws a little uh, failure into the mix. We'll, we'll, we'll see what he can pull off at the major. Uh, we're getting, you know, towards the, the second half of this season, so it'll be tough to surpass that, but I'm still shooting for that top three, top five at a minimum. You know we're going to make it, bro. No questions asked. Shout out Haka. Haka and I were tied at the start of this RMR sequence. Buddy got a one percenter. Haka, I know you watch these fantasy videos. Thank you for always being out there. I hope that our fantasy land community could have somehow you know, affected your picks and got you to that 1%. I don't want to say, okay, I'm going to say it. I literally drafted the exact same team as Hawka at one point and then just let it slide. I let it slide. I had Torzi. I did. Perfecto. He was there. Juan Flotro. It was all there. The 1%, we had it, which means today I'm going to offer you guys a few rosters uh, because one of those is bound to be a one percenter, right? We are the reason Hawk is now third. I'm sorry I said it. EU RMRB, dude, is so incredibly stacked. This is a tough one. Not only, uh, not only is it European Counter-Strike, so it's going to be tight, but, dude, the team's at this one, right? So we're, we're looking at eight spots guaranteed for these teams and then three of them go to the last chance qualifier to play three teams from the a group to fight out for one place but we know phase is already over there because they got beat by mouse so already if you're not in the top eight you know at least you have to beat phase in order to nab that which is super scary and uh so i bet all these teams are looking to qualify right here right now this week if i had to try to choose eight right now I'm putting Heroic and Cloud9 as my S-tier guarantees. I'm putting G2 and Vitality as my A-tier. And then everything after that gets a little bit muddied. But I'm looking at Ents, Fours, Astralis, 
And I don't know after that. I have to say the struggles from Spirit lately have kind of got me sketched out. I really believed in nine at the showdown. Can they do it in this specific group? That would be amazing. Uh, but at the same time, you know, ninjas could have a pop-off. Eternal Fire have had a good LAN already this event or this year, this season. And, and big is big is big. You know, they somehow always clinch it. They somehow stay afloat. So the four guarantee to me are the top. I don't think Zywoo is going to miss a major. I think Cloud9 have been playing tons of CS. They look great. I think Heroic, even though they kind of flop playoffs at Pro League, are going to bounce right back. This is an environment they thrive in. I don't anticipate G2 flubbing this either. They've got a really good seed for this, actually. So these four, all guarantees. Let's draft. With what I just said about those four teams being in the top, we got to check the prices now for G2 because I think the problem for this draft is that the favorites barring Heroic and Vitality, all have a very expensive trio at the moment, right? Hunter has now popped up to 215. It's the equivalent of Hobbit being at 218. You know, normally that's the, the you pick him and the bottom fragger of that team, and then you get the 2-2-1 formula. But I think it's a little bit tough. And, and obviously in Vitality, I wouldn't, I wouldn't blame you if you're a little sketched out by their results or don't believe in them too much. We know the Zywoo show is going to be very real. And, and the last time Zywoo was a choice for a fantasy episode, I did say when Zywoo's an option, you always pick him. But I'll circle back to that and explain why I'm not going to this time around. Or at least right now, I really don't believe I will. It would take some kind of massive change in my brain uh, for that to, to kind of be a, a last second lock-in. So what I'm looking at right now personally is Heroic. I like Heroic. Um, I think it's, again, a team you can rely on for the middle of the pack, you know, situation. And, and so when I look at Heroic at this price tag, nobody really seems overly inflated, right? Stown is reasonable if you want to try to take the star. Uh, Kadian and Javi are kind of interchangeably second right now. You know Tess is good for a map. And Shush always keeps the floor of Heroic pretty high. Not to mention when they play versus better teams and when they have tight games, I think that's when Shush can actually end up getting you more points than you really expect. So for me right now, I look at these five, and I'm going to jump on Kadian. Love the in-game leader in the op. That combination's always great. And especially when he sees openings in games, he's taken his aggression. You know, he's, he's putting himself in a, in a place where, where he can finish games with 20-plus kills. So Kadian's my first shoe in. I would love to take Jabby. I, I'm, a, I'm a pretty regular Jabby picker, but I want that little bit of extra change, and you'll see why. For now, we're going to take Tess. Again, Tess, reliable rifling. That is what you get out of Heroic. You get reliability. Um, I'm saying this as I did double pick them for playoffs, and they faltered. That one still stings, but it doesn't shake or waver my belief in Heroic for an event like an RMR. I do believe they could even walk in through a, with a legend spot. You know, that, that seems incredibly likely to me. So with, with Heroic being our double pick, there's not really room for Cloud9 or G2, sadly. Uh, there's no room for Vitality. And so we get down into that those A-tier teams that I was talking about. I think Astralis right now look great, but they have a struggle when it comes to transitioning that to land. So I'm hands off and also very expensive top heavy. And I was shocked with what they did at Pro League. I, I want to try to start going into Nerd's picks, but he hasn't shown me enough just yet for me to really believe in that, I don't think. So we're not going to touch either of these two teams, and we're going to put our eyes on the CIS region in fours and Spirit. Now, if you remember Spirit at the start of the year, we had Wonderful and Patsy in like the 220,000s. These guys were supposed to be the team outside of partnered teams that were going to take over Counter-Strike in 2023, but holy hell have they fell off. Patsy down to 202,000, looks like a shell of himself from 2022. Wonderful's trying his absolute damnedest to keep everybody together, but you know, Magic's most improved player on LAN last year, statistically from HLTV, it's just not reliable anymore. Fours are the new kids on the block. They've had a really good pro league season. They almost beat FaZe in order to push it to a semifinals. Hell, Zorte was the top-rated player of their ESL Pro League group. I believe in Jerry's calling. Always have. They were kind of sidelined in the last couple major cycles, and for whatever reason, it wasn't clicking. But now it is. They've got the confidence. They've got the wins. And I think they've got really reasonable price tags here. So if Heroic is my carry, I'm leaning on fours as my support. I'm taking Zorte, who had a 
fantastic, fantastic pro league group and also is the highest rated player in the last month. Four fours, surpassing that of Shalfi, even though he is hands down the best rifler on this team. I think Zorte right now, that extra $9,000 we gain is certainly worth it. I'm just banking on him getting a repeat performance from the previous uh, uh, pro league. Let's hope that happens, and let's hope that Jerry as well can keep things up on an individual level, because Jerry will have a game or two that just keeps his rating up above one at 190k. I don't need you making me my points. That's where Heroic and that's where Zorte are coming through. I just need uh, Jerry not to sink this ship, and I'm going to say the same damn thing about Buster. I think Cloud9 are going to have a really good event, and I think that Buster, right now, his price tag is still quite low because he is just returning to Tier 1 Counter-Strike. Uh, He's slowly, incrementally moving up the board for Cloud9. I think that Hobbit is actually taking a lot of rating that maybe Naphany and Buster would usually be able to pick up. So it is a little scary that if Buster has a quiet game and dies a few too many times, his rating will get sub 1.0. But if it's a real heavy-handed win from Cloud9, I think Buster gets kind of sucked up onto the coattails of everybody else and ends up uh, pulling, something, pulling something worthwhile off. So this is the team. These are the golems. Uh, I put Defender on Cadian to free up main op on Zorte. Tess leader just because he doesn't activate much and that's five free points expecting them to go through 3-0. Entry Fragger on Jerry won't activate too often but he's kind of like Tess where we're not getting much and Buster is a, is a, is a shoe in for support. So I'm, I'm pretty confident in these role selections. I'm pretty confident in this team. 80% uh, chance that this is the roster I lock in with. However, I do understand that Cloud9 look really good right now. And I do understand that going for the double fours pick could be as risky as my double mouse pick. Although this time I would argue that I'm not taking the two bottom fraggers on the side of fours. I'm taking what could be their star opper and what could be the middle of the pack in Jerry. So I'm a little bit more confident in fours, but at the same time, they've got a tough seed. It's why they open versus Cloud9. And that opening game versus Cloud9 could make Forza's run difficult if they get knocked down to 0-1, have an off BO1 day. It is very much sketchy for fours. I understand that, especially with expectations higher on them. I feel like teams are going to be watching them. They did just have that good showing at Pro League. They are on everybody's radar. Here's an alternative. We take that third piece in Hobbit who behind Axile and Shiro right now is rising through the ranks. And I would argue is actually more consistent than Axile at the moment. Axile definitely has a higher ceiling. Don't get me wrong. It's not even close. But Hobbit is right there. And he is pushing this team forward to attend another major, to maybe even make it to another playoffs. If we emphasize Cloud9 in this draft for the EUB RMR, then I'm taking Hobbit. And again, I'm taking Buster. With the Buster pick, that's Cloud9 out of the way. We have to bring down our choices on Tess. Uh, it costs us no Cadian. It costs us no Jabby. But we still get the Tess Shush double heroic, which I think is a safer bet. And then I'm going to give a little shout out to Zipix. I think, again, Astralis look really good right now. Uh, Buzz is slotting into this team. And with Device and Blame F, if Buzz is their third, I truly believe Zipix is stable enough and Glaive's in-game leadership. It's not good for HLTV Fantasy, but it is good enough, I think, to pull off some wins. They should be attending the major. They really should be. I think this is them getting back. Uh, they just had a really good qualifier for IEM Dallas 2. Yes, it's online games, but Astralis are in a pretty solid place. So I'm, I'm kind of giving a little nod to Zipix. Last time I wrote him off, I chose Glaive instead. I was the fool in that case. That was with our Zywoo pick, which could have been a we gone with Snappy, but <laughs> whatever, it's behind us, doesn't matter. Another draft is if we get into the Shiro super hard, crazy god mode op draft, right? I, I, I've got two here between Shiro and Zaiwu, but the reason I'm not leaning into it right now, even though, again, I said you always take Zaiwu if you can, is just I don't like the, the players we get left over with if you go super heavy on Shiro or on Zaiwu. You can see it here, right? At least in this instance, I'm still believing in Buster, but like Jerry with Crad, that to me is kind of like the, pro the, the same mistake I just made with JDC and Dexter. Uh, we're taking the in-game leader who's usually towards the bottom and can have a second place finish, uh, and, and Crad, who much like JDC, has these crazy 1.2 rating maps, but then also just disappears into the 0.6s too often for my liking. It's a real risky draft here. It's still got the Buster Zipic situation, but I understand... Uh, the double four is risk. I just don't like it. 
it, it, I'm, I'm not feeling it. You know, I took my risks on the North American RMR. I took my risk in the EU RMR. And right now, I'm just looking to stabilize heading into the major where I'm hoping to get a, a couple more successful drafts in. Same for Zywu. In this case, it does free up Nafany. So I think I can replace Crad with Nafany. At least this way, I have more faith in the Cloud9 win than I do with the 4s wins. Uh, I actually prefer this Zywu Buster Nafany Jerry Zipix over top of the Shiro one, just to compare the two. It, taking Crad out and putting Nafany in, yes, it frees up the Cloud9 player so we can get Zywu. And also, if Zywu and Vitality struggle in wins, he's still going to be getting his points. He's still going to be farming. I think it's less likely that Zywu's teammates steal his rating than it is that Shiro's teammates steal his rating, right? Axile and Hobbit look really good right now. Shiro just could get through without a rating that reflects his price tag. So these are your options. These are what I think the best drafts are, really emphasizing Cloud9, Heroic, 4s. I didn't touch G2 just because of the price tags, just because of their struggles at Pro League. Um, I'm not saying they're not going to qualify. I think they have, again, a really good seed, and I believe in them. Uh, they'll be all right. But it's kind of the same way I didn't touch a phased player here for this draft at the European RMR A, and I still finished up in the top 22%. You don't need to include one of the top teams. And in this case, I'm not touching G2. I think it's, uh, I don't know, man. There's something funny in the water. So locked in the golems, Katie and Tessas, Zorte, Jerry, Buster, putting stock on fours and hoping this one doesn't blow up. It's scrawny with the skinny. Rule number two, get down to the comments, talk that shit. Uh, let me know how your guys' European RMRs went. Let me know what you think about Chiron getting cut. And uh, tell me why I'm such a fool for going on next when I could have just doubled liquid. See you guys for the next one. Peace.